I want to get into some, uh, I want to get into some, uh, Plato's Mathematics. Um, now, well, this isn't, like, Plato's, like, ma total mathematics, it's more, um, it's more philosophy of ma mathematics, because philosophy of, ma philosophy of ma ma mathematics is really interesting, it's, it's a really interesting part of analytic philosophy, I think, but, uh, Plato is pretty much the very start of, of the philosophy of mathematics. Now, this is with the forms. This is with, you know, the forms, I guess. And this has to do with, this comes from the Republic and it comes from the Mino dialogues, those two. And, um, first of all, if you don't know, know, know anything about Plato, Plato is the first person who introduced an idea of a, you know, of, well, he probably the first person who, who, who introduced the idea of a uh, universal or a, uh, a you know a uh, property or an, uh, uh, the abstract an abstract object is something that you know is something that's in the platonic heavens which is uh, something that is a uh, sort of sort of it's not a uh, concrete object. There's concreta and then there's abstracta. Concreta is something like, you know, something like, uh, this water bottle. You know, it's sort of, this, that, that is a concreta. It's a concrete object. It's part of the, of the, of the concreta. Now, there is a, a, a an abstract object. And it's in the Platonic heavens, which well, I'm not saying that there is. I'm saying that if there are, if there were, if there were abstracted, then there would be an abstract uh, uh, object, which would be the form of, or the universal of all water bottles. And then this would be a instantiation of that. It would be an instantiated instantiation in a concrete object. Now. What that means is that, um, it means that we need to, relating this to numbers, it means that we have, um, for example, we have the, all uh, the universal of two-ness, um, the, thus the, um, the, uh, all the, um, all of the concreta would be c all the couples in the world, all the collections of two in the world. Um, now, going to all the way to Gallup Frega, we have the, the Hume's principle. Hume's principle is where we have concepts F and G, where F um, F equals G um God, no way um where um F and G are equal if there's I guess if there's a one on one correspondence between the number of the concept F and the number of the concept G so if we have now con by, by concept I mean let's say we have the concept of two-ness um where we have a one-on-one -on -one correspondence between two number between two concepts of tunis. Now there's one number of the concept tunis, and then there's one number of the concept tunis, I guess, which are both concepts of concepts f and g. So this is human's human principle. But then there could be there could be other other things like they have, they have the there's the Caesar problem. There's re reconceptualization and abstraction and all, all that stuff. That's a that's Neo Neophaganism, but the reason I brought up Hume's Hume's principle is because I want to think about um, Plato's Plato's mathematics, Plato's um, philosophy of mathematics, and this is because um, what 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 it is basically is that we have um, we have abstract we have universals which give us our numbers. Our numbers come from um, mathematical forms. Mathematical forms of 
oneness and twoness and threeness and fourness and you know three things and four things and five things and six things and so on which create certain collections or certain sets their classes which you know we have these forms which create them these are um, objectives so this, this so a, pl a plateness was, would be a realist in uh, ontology in that mathematical objects are entirely real they're entirely real now this the, this um, idea comes from Plato's, Plato's Republic and it has to do with the analogy of the cave <coughs> in, that, in, that, in that there are forms with from for with each each stage that of the cave where there's a form for where the people are tied to the very bottom of the cave and they're looking at the set of the shadows and the light from the top and then there's a form where they see they're going up they're they're going up and they see the little light and the people and there's another form of um, uh, there's a let's see it's what is it? Pistis, um, Dianoia, and di Dialectic. No, because there's also another form when the, when the person leaves the cave eventually. Now these are certain forms for certain types of knowledge, which there there are forms just for um, mathematics. There there's forms for you know there are math mathematical forms. Um, so there the way the way we get our concept of two. So, so we'll, we'll have this question, what is 5? What is 5? Um, now we have the thing of 5, we have the thing of 5, and we have the name of 5. Um, the thing of 5 comes from any, any, any set of 5, or any class of 5, fiveness. Which comes from, I mean, if you're a plateness, this comes from the um, abstract uh, form of fiveness. So, and then the name comes from how many are in that set. So I guess what I'm saying here is that it's all objective and just like all the other, all the other forms. So this, that, that's what fiveness and mathematics are. Um, but then I guess I'm going to do something later. I'm going to do something with um, neo-forganism on this channel also. But then, um, another thing that is Platonist mathematics is, comes from Plato's Meno. It's where Socrates uh, talks, to a, talks to a slave, slit slave boy, who basically teaches him a certain way where, I can't remember what, he, what exactly he does, but he does something mathematical, and he gets the kid to do something uh, that is mathematically, you know, something that's a little bit, you know, not not too advanced. But it's apparently Socrates inferred that because he got him to draw this square three times in different, you know, congruencies. That's not even the word, but just because so Socrates got him, got him to do that, it's just mere recollection. Recollection in that in that since there's our mathematical forms, which are objective, that we are able to look at them we're able to get the get that back through our mind because they're so objective there's therefore there's a theory of re recollection here and that's that's how the kid was able to do was able to say do that that square doubling the tripling doubling square thing that's all that's only what he was, he was able to it was through recollection and and again, again Platonists, you, they are realist in, in mathematics, they are realist in, in ontology because they say that they're mathematically, I mean, they are objectively real and they're also mathematics in truth value. Because they would say that mathematical truths are bivalent in that there are, there's a law of the excluded middle there. It's either, and again, the law of the excluded middle is, it's either A, it's either A, or it's not A. There's no, there's no in-between. It's a, it's a logical law until 
until until intuition is logic. So I have to say that I don't I'm not really into the Plato the Platonic Platonist mathematical theory. It is not it's not correct because the thing is that we cannot prove first of all that there um, we cannot prove that um, that there are forms which are instantiated in, in sets or classes. We can't prove that. There's no proof of, the, of any of that. So I don't know. I guess I can't really I can't really see how that's possible. Second of all. Um, I really do not think that um, gosh, I, I, how can we prove that there are forms based on that are outside of ourselves because the only way the one, only way that we see them is through ourselves so I don't really understand but anyway, um, tell, me, tell, me, tell me what you think about Platonist uh, philosophy of mathematics. Because this is, this is um, interesting. Probably next we'll probably go on to maybe, maybe Aristotle. I don't know. But I definitely want to go to Aristotle and definitely to Kant. I've, I've already done Kant, kind of, so I don't know if I'll do that or not. So I've done, I talked about his transcendental aesthetic, so I'm not sure if I'll do that again but anyway um, I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking that next I'll probably get into the big three things the big three philosophies of mathematics which are Logicism, intuitionism, and uh, formalism, and finitism, and deductivism. So I'm just thinking about that. So I'll get I'll get into that later. So hopefully this I will I'll, I'll actually able, be able to. So I don't know. Thinking about this stuff. So if you have any thoughts on this, please please let me know. So and um, I think I have in a different video somewhere about this so if you have a if you want to find talk to think, think more about this whole philosophy of mathematics then go, then go here so thanks